Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video we are going to take a quick look at some of the checking and calculation options for formulas in Excel. Now it's useful to know these before we go into too much detail on formulas and functions as this can help you resolve any issues that you might be having in your calculation steps. Now we're going to start with coming over here to our formulas tab on our ribbon so it's the fourth one here and we're going to come over to this formula auditing box. Now one of the first useful uh, options that we have in here is this show formulas button which you can also use the shortcut control and apostrophe to get and if we click on this what it will do is it will show the formulas that are in all of our cells in our workbook. So you can see here that I've got a number of if errors and B lookups in these cells and some multiplication in here and our total rows are doing sums. So this can be useful if you want to quickly see which cells have formulas in them and what those might look like without having to click into each individual cell. But as you can see, it's expanded out our different columns and makes our workbook possibly a little bit difficult to read. So if we turn that back off, our workbook will go back to normal. A second option that we have in this formula auditing section is this trace dependence and trace precedence buttons. So if we click on trace dependence, what this will do is it will look at your formula and it will tell you any other cells that are dependent on the value in here. So if we click on this, you will see one arrow appears and it will, it's saying that this value in this cell is used in a formula in this cell. So if we click in here, you can see that that's the case. In a similar manner, this trace precedence button, if we click on that, it will again put in arrows that shows you where the elements that make the formula in this cell are coming from. This is similar to clicking into your cell and it's showing in highlighted colors where the different elements of your formula are coming from. If we want to remove the arrows, we click on the remove arrows button or we can select the drop down list and simply remove either the dependent or precedent arrows. If you find you are getting errors in your worksheet, so for example, if I take out of this formula the if error function, because it's looking up a blank value, um, we're getting a not applicable in here. What we can do from anywhere on a sheet, we can click on this error checking button. And what it will do is it will tell you the cells that it's finding errors in. So there are a number of errors through our worksheet now because this one's coming up as an error. And the options it gives you, it, you can get help on this error, which will take you to a web page. You can trace the error. So if this error is actually being caused by an error in an earlier cell, then you can trace back where it comes from. So if we click trace error, you can see that it's coming back to this cell here. You can choose to ignore it or you can edit your formula bar. Now, what we want to do in this instance is we want to come back to the root cause of the problem, which is this cell here. So the start of the red line and fix that cell. So if we just click out of that for a second, click on this first cell here and click on error checking, you'll find it's highlighting that this formula is an issue and it's basically saying that a value is not available to the formula or function. So essentially what it's saying here is that it's trying to look up a blank value. So if we click into show calculation steps, you can see that this is the formula that Excel is having an issue with. Click on evaluate and it shows you that you're getting a not applicable response. So it's highlighting at the moment that F15 is where it's finding the issue and it's because it's looking up this value and that value is a blank. So if we were to fix that by putting in a value here, say line seven, obviously it's now not looking at blank value and you no longer have the error. What we actually wanna do is put the F error function back in front so that the formula is returning a zero value rather than an error if it's trying to look up a blank value. You can evaluate any formula in your workbook. However, this function is probably most useful if you're using very complex formulas and it's something that we might touch on in later videos. Some other useful options to understand before you start working with formulas and functions 
are these calculation options. Now by default, your worksheet will generally be set up to calculate all formulas automatically. However, in very large complex data sets or in certain instances, you might not want your formulas calculated automatically. So you might set it to manual. And if you do this, what will happen if you update any of these figures? So say we updated this to 1099. You will notice that it doesn't actually update in this table until we hit calculate now. Calculate now will calculate all formulas throughout your entire workbook, all tabs. If you just want to calculate the sheet that you're working on, you can click calculate sheet. If you're finding that for some reason your formulas in your workbook aren't calculating, it is worthwhile coming in here and checking whether you have the manual option selected. So this has been just a brief introduction into some of the calculation options in Excel and some of the options that you might have for checking your formulas. I hope that you found it useful. Please do leave me a comment and I look forward to seeing you in a future video.